Well, good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar titled, What to Expect at Your Mammogram. My name is Lois Brown and I'm the nurse educator at the American Indian Cancer Foundation. I would like to start out by thanking all of you for attending today's webinar, which will be only about 15 minutes long and intended to provide a brief overview of what women can expect when they get a mammogram. Due to the short duration of the webinar and it's a few your time, there is no time allotted for questions and answers. If you do have questions, you're encouraged to type your questions into the chat box if you are watching with us on Zoom. And if you are watching on Facebook Live, you can post a comment if you are watching with us live or watching the replay. You can also send an email to health at AICAF.org and we will send a follow-up email answering the questions and provide a recording of the webinar. I would also like to thank the clinic and community health and the Urban Cancer Solutions Program team members here at ACAF for helping create the content that I will be going over today. So let's start off today's webinar with the poll question. You should all see a box on your screen with the poll question. Please take a moment to answer the question and hit submit. The question reads, for the women watching the webinar, how likely are you to get a webinar, uh, mammogram? Just give you a couple seconds to, to vote and to put in your, your answer. All right. So it looks like the majority of you are likely to get a mammogram, which is wonderful. There are a few that are very likely as well as unlikely and a few that are very unlikely. So let's go ahead with the webinar and learn a little bit more about what you can expect when you do go in for a mammogram. So before we talk about a mammogram, let's briefly review the anatomy of the breast so we better understand where cancer grows in the breast and how mammograms find abnormalities. Well, each breast has lobules, and these are the glands that make milk. These lobules are connected to ducts, and the ducts are tubes that carry the milk to the nipple. There are spaces around the lobules and the ducts that are filled in with fat, ligaments, and connective tissue. And another thing you'll notice in this slide is the lymphatic system, which is the network of lymph nodes and lymph ducts. So what is breast cancer? Well, cancer is defined as a disease caused by an uncontrolled division of abnormal cells in a part of the body. So breast cancer is where there's uncontrolled division of abnormal cells in the breast. These abnormal cells divide and grow, forming a lump in tissues of the breast, with the most common being formed in the ducts and lobules. These cancers are known as ductal and lobular breast cancers, and they are the most common. If left untreated, cancer can spread to the other areas of the body. So thankfully, we do have uh, mammograms so that we can screen breast cancer and catch the cancerous changes early. So who needs a breast cancer screening? Those who need a mammogram, well, first of all, let's be aware of the fact that there are variations to national mammogram recommendations. So the guidelines that are presented today are general guidelines. Females of all ages benefit from an annual health exam. In May, Dr. Briegel, who is a gynecologic oncologist, she provided valuable information on what happens in these exams in her presentation titled, Demystifying the Well Woman Exam, What Are You Doing Down There? That presentation is recorded and can be found on the ACAF's YouTube channel and Facebook page. The clinical breast exam can be done every one to three years in women ages 40 and younger, and every year for women older than 40. And for mammograms in general, women can start getting mammograms at the age of 40. You always want to make sure you work with your doctor and insurance company to make sure the cost of your mammogram is covered. You can also talk with your clinic about available programs to cover the cost of your mammogram if you are under or uninsured. So breast cancer is the most diagnosed cancer and the second leading cause of cancer death for American Indian women. One in eight women will get breast cancer in their lifetime. American Indian women have a 10% higher death rate than non-Hispanic white women. And we do know that mammography is the best tool with a 98% survival rate with early detection. So it's very important that you get regular mammogram screenings. Prevention is also key when it comes to breast cancer. 
Each item listed here is a modifiable risk factor, meaning they are risk factors that each of us have control over. We can choose to get our mammogram regularly. We can choose to be active. We can choose to not smoke cigarettes. If you struggle in any of these areas, please do not hesitate to talk to your doctor to get connected to resources in your community that support your decisions to live a healthier lifestyle. You may recognize some of these risk factors in your own communities, which is why it's important to highlight how they play a role in our high cancer rates in the American Indian Alaska Native communities. A high burden of cancer risk factors include being female, it includes tobacco abuse and cigarette smoke exposure, which is linked to a higher risk in younger premenopausal women. Alcohol abuse is also a risk factor when you're consuming two alcohol beverages a day or more. Diets that are high in animal fats and low in fiber and low in fruit and veggie intake. Uh, getting a uh, lack of regular physical activity and being obese are all high burden cancer risk factors. The World Cancer Research Fund says about 20% of cancers diagnosed in the U.S. are related to obesity, physical inactivity, excess alcohol consumption, and poor nutrition. Aging is another risk factor. Just like all other cancers, chances of developing breast cancer increases with age. About two out of three invasive breast cancers are found in women age 55 and older. The use of long-term hormone replacement therapy. Postmenopausal women use this for many years to ease menopause symptoms such as hot flashes and fatigue. According to breastcancer.org, combination hormone replacement therapy increases breast cancer risk by 75% even when used for a short period of time. It also increases the chances of it being found at a more advanced stage. This is a complex topic as not all hormone replacement therapy contains progesterone, which is thought to be a greater contributor than originally thought. Family history is also a risk factor. If you've had one first degree female relative, such as a sister, a mother, a daughter, that was diagnosed with breast cancer, that means your chance of developing it is doubled. It's important to know your family's history with cancer. The BRCA gene is important to note in family history as well. BRCA impacts men as well. Uh, such as male breast cancer, pancreatic cancers. So it's important to get cancer history of your whole family. Women can inherit breast cancer risk from their male relatives, which surprises some people. And not breastfeeding is also another risk factor. Producing milk limits the breast cells to be cancerous. Women also have fewer periods when they breastfeed, which lowers estrogen levels. Not only does it lower your risk for breast cancer, the milk gives antibodies to your child that can protect them from infections. Having a late pregnancy and then family genes also increase cancer risk. Breast cancer is genetic. About 5% to 10% of breast cancers are passed from the parent with abnormal genes onto the child. So what are the signs and symptoms of breast cancer? Signs and symptoms of breast cancer include unusual discharge from the nipple, dimpling or pitting in the breast, nipple changes, and skin changes. These are symptoms that usually appear later on with cancer progression are, most like, are mostly for you to be aware of. Breast cancer usually has no symptoms when the tumor is small and most treatable. Here is an ACAF resource material that the American Indian Cancer Foundation has made regarding breast cancer. This is, you can use this for patient education and it can be found on our website at AmericanIndianCancer.org. Screening for breast cancer may include a clinical breast exam and a mammogram. The clinical breast exam is where your doctor carefully feels the breasts and underarms for lumps or anything else unusual. It may be done during a regular checkup with your doctor. Please know that you can always ask to have a clinical breast exam if you want one. The mammogram is a low-dose x-ray to see inside the breast. This aids in early detection and diagnosis of breast diseases. The mammogram is the most effective tool to find breast cancer. The mammogram can show changes in breasts up to two years before you or your doctor can feel them. The clinical, clinical breast exam is comprised of a visual and a physical inspection. During the visual inspection, the doctor is checking if the breasts are symmetrical, if there are rashes or irregular features of the skin, such as pitting or dimpling. During the physical inspection, the doctor is applying pressure to the nipples to assess for discharge or leaking of fluid. All breast tissue 
is felt in either a circular or up and down motion to feel for irregularities. Lymph nodes in the armpit are also felt to inspect for enlarged areas. This slide shows a few great pictures. The picture on the left shows the mammography machine, the mammographer, and the patient. The middle slide shows an example of what the mammogram x-ray looks like in a woman without breast concerns. The slide on the right shows an example of what the mammogram x-ray may look like in a woman with breast cancer. According to mammographysaveslives.org, three-fourths of women diagnosed with breast cancer have no family history of the disease and are not considered high risk, which is why a mammogram is crucial and could save a life. Mammography has helped reduce breast cancer mortality in the United States by nearly a third since the 90s. For every 1,000 women who have a mammogram, 100 could get called back for another screening test. 20 are recommended for a biopsy, and then five are diagnosed with breast cancer. Although these numbers seem promising, we must remember that these are not necessarily reflective of American Indian women, especially women in the Northern Plains in Alaska. It's important to speak to your doctor about all screenings that are available to you, which are clinical breast exams, mammography, and even breast MRIs for women with higher risk. So before your mammogram, your doctor can refer you for your mammogram and you will want to know if you are experiencing, he will want to know if you are experiencing or have experienced any breast symptoms or problems, prior surgeries, hormone use, whether you have a family or personal history of breast cancer, and if there's a possibility that you are pregnant. Some tips to prepare for your mammogram are to leave jewelry at home, wear loose, comfortable clothing that you may be, and you may be asked to undress and put a gown on. It is advised that you don't wear deodorant or lotion under your arms or on your breasts. This is because metallics that may be in your deodorant or lotion may appear on the mammogram and interfere with findings. You can bring your deodorant if you want to put it on after or the clinic may have some available. If you forget and wear deodorant, don't worry. They will have wipes to remove it. Just let them know. During your mammogram, your chain mammography technologist will position the breast in the mammography unit. The breast will be placed between two x-ray plates and the technologist will gradually compress the breast between the two plates. You may be asked to change positions between the images. You may feel pressure at your breast as your breast is squeezed by the compression paddle. If you have sensitive breasts, you may experience some discomfort or pain. Please let your technologist know. You may hold very still you must hold very still, and you may be asked to hold your breath for a few seconds while the x-ray picture is taken to make sure a clear picture is taken. The whole mammogram appointment takes about 30 minutes. It is fairly common to have questions, and it's important to know that you are always in control during the whole appointment. Please, don't be shy, ask questions. It's unlikely, but if the mammographer tech isn't letting you know step-by-step step what is going on, ask. This is your mammogram, your body. You have a right to know what is going on step-by-step. Step. Try positive self-talk. Sometimes we can psych ourselves out with negative thoughts and negative talk. Choose to think and speak positively about the choice you are making to live healthy. Remind yourself why you are choosing to get a mammogram and focus on the positive. Talk to your doctor about ways to help manage any fears or discomfort. It is possible to try an analgesic like Tylenol prior to your appointment. Ask your doctor if that's the right choice for you. This is a powerful image that shows why screening is so important. This image shows the size of the cancer cell before any symptoms are noticed. This is why screening and knowing your history and self is so crucial. Remember, on average, a mammogram can see things two years before it is felt. By the time your doctor can feel a lump in your breast, you may have had the cancer for several years. After your mammogram, you should ask when your results will be available to you. Make sure that your phone number and other contact information is up to date. A radiologist will look at the images and send a report to your primary doctor or referring doctor who will discuss the results with you. Please do not assume the results are normal if you do not hear from your doctor or mammography facility. Follow-up exams might be needed and your doctor will explain the reason why. 
If your doctor tells you your result is abnormal, it does not mean you have cancer. It could be a lot of different things, and we will talk about these next week. About 10% are called back for more imaging. The number of women who will have a more serious diagnosis will be very small. For those who registered and attended today's webinar, you will be entered into a drawing for our uh, IP Contigo Thermos, our Indigenous Pink Contigo Thermos. Winner will be announced today via email and Facebook. Please plan to join us next Tuesday, October 9th, again at 12, uh, 12 p.m. for another lightning round about abnormal mammogram results. Now what?